If you've been following my TikTok, you know I've been doing a big watch along with the original Dragon Ball anime series. And if you're not already following my TikTok, it's right here. Go ahead and follow it. I do a ton of anime reviews, watch alongs, just fun conversational stuff on there. So follow that for more stuff. With that out the way, I'm glad to say I have completely finished the original Dragon Ball anime. And I'm here to review it for you guys and give my overall thoughts on it. Now, firstly, this show holds up surprisingly well. It always gave me this Saturday morning cartoon vibe when I was watching it. And even though I've actually never seen any Dragon Ball content at all, it still felt super Super nostalgic to me. That could be thanks to the old animation style, the great kind of classic music almost, and then also the fact that I'm watching one of the most iconic anime ever made. Now I know Dragon Ball Z is very popular because of the big fights, the power scaling, all the crazy action and that sort of thing, but original Dragon Ball is extremely different. The focus isn't at all on the powers or the big fights or the crazy spectacles or anything like that. Instead the focus is literally just a kid going on the journey to collect his grandpa's four star Dragon Ball, and that's basically it. Obviously there's a lot of side characters and motivations and whatnot going on, but the center of the story what Goku cares about most is just getting that Dragon Ball that his grandpa used to have and that's it. Now with that said I do hear a lot of people saying that they skip the original Dragon Ball and just go straight to Z. Now I live on the side that there's no wrong way to watch a show. There's no wrong dub, wrong sub, wrong version of anything or any way to watch a specific anime. Whatever way you want to watch it is the right way for you or whatever. However I can say honestly I think if you do skip the original anime and go straight to Z you're gonna be missing out on a ton of story. A majority of the characters in Z that are big main plot point characters are introduced and showcased originally in the original Dragon Ball anime. So you're not only skipping origin stories, but you're also skipping a good amount of character development too. Obviously the big stuff you're missing here is meeting Kid Goku for the first time, Bulma, Roshi, Krillin, all that stuff is kind of the main thing that you'd be missing out on. But there's a lot of other smaller things too. For example, I had talked to my nephew who had seen Z already, and he had no idea that Tien was originally introduced as a villain and a rival to Goku, who was also trained by Roshi's former rival also. And it's that sort of background storytelling lore building that you're missing out on if you skip the original anime. But that's also what makes me love this show so much. So I don't think there is a wrong way to watch Dragon Ball or a right way to watch Dragon Ball. I definitely think you're missing out on a ton of backstory by skipping the original anime and I do think and recommend that you watch it before Z or Super. Now if you do try to go back and watch the old Dragon Ball anime, it's important to know that in my opinion it has aged pretty well. However, there's one thing that can't stop an old anime from aging well and that's its pacing. The pacing for the show unfortunately is kind of all over the place. While the show doesn't really have fillers, it definitely has sections that just aren't important or just kind of questionable as to why they're there. Sometimes the show is super fast with certain episodes and then other times it's super slow. And there's also a ton of like long pauses and deep breaths in between certain things for some reason. For example, when Goku takes off his weights, it legitimately takes almost like 15 seconds for him to completely take his weights off. So it's just kind of silence in between then. I did see some other users that were also watching the show suggest to watch the show a little bit faster. So either at 1.25 times speed or 1.5 times speed, just to get through some of those long sections or pauses. So if you're watching Dragon Ball and you're having a hard time getting through it or you feel like it's too slow, try doing that. That might help, but I still think you should watch it in its original speed. Now I'm going to try avoiding spoilers in this review as much as possible, so let's get started. So we're just going to review each saga in order as they come in the story, so chronologically. And then after that we'll get into actually ranking each saga and which one I like the most and the least and whatnot. So the first saga we have up here is the Emperor Pilaf saga. Now this saga I honestly loved, but it is definitely the most different saga from Dragon Ball Z out of the whole show, being that there's honestly not that much fighting in this saga. Sure there is some fighting and some small action scenes, but this first saga is mainly focused on Goku and his adventure. We also get the big introduction to Goku, Bulma, Roshi, and a few other characters. Also it's really important to know that this whole universe of Dragon Ball and all these crazy planetary fights and you know whatever, all start because in the beginning of the show Bulma's looking for the Dragon Ball so she can wish that she had a boyfriend so that kind of just puts everything into perspective that this whole universe started with this one small insignificant little plot detail and kind of just blew up from there. This saga is definitely one of my favorites. It honestly has a pretty slice of life feel to it as it's just Goku kind of going on adventures and figuring himself out, figuring out what's going on in the world because before this he was basically just a random kid in the forest and until now he's kind of just been secluded from everything. So this saga is him going out into the world and just figuring things out and learning about things on the way. This is also by far the most goofiest saga in all of Dragon Ball. I seriously sometimes just started bursting out laughing because some of these sequences and scenes are just absolutely hilarious really. Moving on to the next saga is the tournament saga. This one I did enjoy a lot as it is the first fight focused saga in the whole show and it also 
introduces us to Krillin and Jackie Chun. Now obviously the fights in the saga are really no comparison to something like Z, but that's fine, it's not meant to be something as crazy like that. These are all pretty small, low stake fights, and are honestly just really there to showcase Goku's power level and kind of what he's learned so far up to now in the show. It's a solid saga, but there's really no story development or much movement in the story really. It does a decent amount of world building and is a really good showcase for some of the powers in the show, but overall it's not super amazing for me. Now I'm gonna lump the next three sagas together just because they're all kind of the same saga realistically, and that's the Red Ribbon Army Saga, the General Blue Saga, and the Commander Red Saga. This whole section is basically all dedicated to Goku versus the Red Ribbon Army, so that's kind of why I'm ranking them together. And also I feel like all three of these sagas are very closely related, so I don't feel like one sticks out really. Now these three sagas also have Goku kind of split up from the main cast of characters for a decent amount of time. You do see them pop up every now and then in between episodes, and they show up during certain scenes and whatnot, but for the most part, it's mainly Goku versus the Red Ribbon Army solo. Now the thing is, none of these sagas are bad, but I just feel like I don't like them as much as the other ones. Goku completely destroys everyone basically. He fights maybe one or two tough opponents, but pretty much he just runs through the whole Red Ribbon Army. I believe we do get the introduction to Mercenary Tao in these sagas, so that's cool, and he is a strong opponent for Goku for a while. He's a standout, he has a funny personality and a cool outfit and some decent scenes throughout the show. And these three sagas do showcase the androids a little bit with Aider, so you do kind of get a little bit development for Z starting here. You also see a rally from Dr. Slump in here as well, which is one of Toriyama's like other projects, I believe. Overall, it's not a bad saga. There are great moments and there's a ton of world development and character building all throughout the saga or these sagas. I just didn't love it that much. I just felt like there wasn't really any stakes. I just felt like Goku was running through the Red Ribbon Army and they held no chance at all. So it was kind of a give and take with this one or with these three sagas. The next saga is the Fortune Teller Baba Saga. Now, I did like this one a good amount. We obviously meet Baba, who's Roshi's sister. So again, a ton more world building. This is also, I'm pretty sure the first time we see Goku's grandpa at least interact with Goku. So that was really cool. And it was honestly kind of emotional seeing them interact together because for this whole time, we as the audience know that Goku, you know, does what he does to his grandpa. Obviously not going to spoil it, but does what he does to his grandpa. But this time, Goku doesn't know. I believe Goku doesn't find out until later on in Z anyways. But it's just really heartfelt because we as the audience are able to know certain things about this storyline and just kind of see it in a different perspective. And it was just really, it, it was really nice. I can't lie. It was really heartfelt and touching seeing Goku and Gohan kind of meet and interact more. There's a good amount of fights and decent concepts introduced in this saga also. And the very ending of this saga does introduce us to Tien and Chatsu, which is pretty dope. Again, solid saga. Nothing really amazing other than really meeting Gohan and some decent fights in between that, but it was good. The next saga is the Tien saga, and like the Fortune Teller Baba one, I also like this one a good amount too. Now, this kind of makes me sad because I do know that Tien doesn't really amount to much or do much in Z. But when he's first introduced here, he's introduced as a pretty staple character for the show. He's pitched as kind of like a villain and rival to Goku at first, and his shift from an insanely just evil villain to an actual humble person is pretty crazy because a lot of the character shifts from bad guys to good guys or whatever in this show has been you know over the course of like an episode or two his shift in his character arc was actually the whole saga so it was pretty well done and had a lot of time to build up and kind of deliver basically while other character development arcs were pretty cut short just because they didn't have the time that Tien did in this one this saga honestly has some really good fight scenes and some great storytelling as well I will say Tien's forearm move that he does showcase in the saga is really dope but I'm like 100% sure they never show that again maybe they do but as far as I know that never comes up in Z or anything, which is pretty weird. The ending for the saga does have insanely huge spoilers for the rest of the series, at least the original Dragon Ball anime. So I do kind of need to talk spoilers here. So I'm gonna put a big spoilers sign up here. So while the sign is up, just know I'm talking spoilers. When it goes away, that means to come back. Basically, I just, I just wanna spoil this show for everyone. I know it's an old show, but I just wanna make sure if you can get through and watch the show without being spoiled, it's honestly pretty worth it. So whatever, just keep an eye on that. If that's up, just mute it. So just skip to when that sign's off and then we'll be good. With that said, the death at the end of this saga, Krillin's death is super crazy to me. This is technically the first big main character death other than Gohan which that was kind of off scene anyways and he's not really a main character if you get what I'm saying so first big main character death and it was really wild the way they portray Goku kind of almost knowing that something bad is gonna happen and the way he kind of instinctively is almost weird about Krillin going back to the tournament and all this you know whatever stuff it just really made the death of Krillin that much more impactful this is easily one of if not the most emotional scenes in the whole show and it honestly gets to me a lot is because of how well done it is and how you see Goku kind of shift in the next arc because up to this point Goku hasn't really been out to kill anyone he's he obviously is down for hurting people and whatnot but when he learns of Krillin's death it's kind of like he's willing to kill now and it's it, that was for me was just a big moment for Goku all right so no more spoilers but the next saga is the King Piccolo saga now this one I'll spoil it for the rankings this is in my opinion the best saga in the whole show it has 
has real stakes and it holds a ton of weight because of how the last saga ended and kind of Goku's plot for revenge really. And it's just really refreshing seeing Goku motivated by something else other than just collecting the Dragon Balls. He actually now has an actual motivation to go hunt King Piccolo, which is really cool. We obviously get the big introduction to King Piccolo too. And that's what made the saga so good for me. While Piccolo's character introduction doesn't go beyond anything other than alien demon guy, the reason why I think he's so good here is because he significantly impacts the story in a way that we just haven't seen yet. We've had villains like Pilaf and whatnot come in, but he's the only villain to really leave a mark on the team and the, the world basically in this whole show. We do get a ton of backstory with Roshi and how he kind of was fighting King Piccolo prior to his actual introduction into the series at this point. And it's also really funny to know, I did talk about how Pilaf doesn't do much. He actually is the character that unleashes Piccolo back into the world. So it's just funny that this little goofy guy villain or whatever from the first original saga comes back to kind of be the, the bringer of Piccolo. And that's just kind of funny to me. And this saga is easily, in my opinion, the best fight scene in all of original Dragon Ball, that being King Piccolo versus Kid Goku at the end of the saga. This whole fight scene was honestly amazing. It was really good. To me, it even held up to like modern standards of fight scenes. It was solid. And I think the reason I like it so much too is because it's Kid Goku at this point. So he's still a little boy fighting this gigantic demon alien guy, which in my opinion just makes it even that much more cooler. You know, it's not like a grown man versus like another grown man, a literal little boy fighting this demon alien and I just thought that was really cool. Overall, I love the saga and I definitely believe it's the best saga in all of Dragon Ball. The last and final saga is the Piccolo Jr. saga. Now this one obviously has a tough act to follow with the last one being so good. And to be clear, the saga is good. It's just not as good as the King Piccolo saga. We do get a pretty big time skip here. So sadly we do lose Kid Goku, which really sucks. I love Kid Goku. I thought his voice acting, his character, everything about him was really funny. And it's a real genuine character. I actually really liked everything about Kid Goku. Now the saga obviously does have the Piccolo versus Goku fight in it and it is good I just don't think as good as King Piccolo versus Kid Goku we also do get kind of the full introduction to Chi Chi we didn't meet her earlier in the series but now she's finally attempting to marry Goku which is good obviously that has big ramifications for the rest of the series moving forward but we do get some plot points about that overall this saga I'm not going to talk too much about it because you know it's spoilers and whatnot but I do think it's a good send-off for the series I think it does allow the audience to kind of feel a little bit concluded with the story while still leaving enough things open for Z and for the sequel to kind of move in I just think it does a lot of the things that the King Piccolo Saga does, just not as good and with not as much stakes. But with that said, let's get into ranking all the sagas in Dragon Ball. So by far, like I said, my favorite saga is the King Piccolo Saga. You already know why. Amazing story, great action, great stakes. It really holds a lot of weight in the whole series for me. And this is honestly the saga that made me stop watching everything else and just focus on Dragon Ball because it was so good. Now, don't roast me for this one, but the second place saga I'm gonna do is the Emperor Pilaf Saga. Now, don't come for me in the comments. I just think the saga is genuine genuinely really really well done and I am a sucker for goofiness and I do love the jokes in this saga I do think it's genuinely really funny and a great introduction to the series and I overall really really liked it it does lack a good amount of action but it is really nostalgic for me even not even watching this before it just feels nostalgic somehow if you've watched this I'm pretty sure you might know what I'm talking about now third place was a little bit harder for me to pick I kept getting two different sagas kind of switching back and forth but I think I land on the TN saga being third place I really genuinely love his character shift I think it's really well done and I'm honestly a pretty big fan of Tien, so kind of sucks. I don't think he does too much in Z, but I am really hyped to see him more. And obviously the ending in the saga is really well done, so that kind of just pushes it up a little bit to third place. For fourth place, I'm gonna go the Piccolo Jr. Saga. I don't hate the saga at all, so I don't think I like massively hate it or think it's trash or anything. It's solid and it does a lot of things really well. I just don't think it does any one thing amazingly, if that makes any sense. Everything that this saga does, I feel like other sagas just do a little bit better. It is still a good saga, it's not as good as the other ones in my opinion. Next, I'll go the Fortune Teller Baba Saga. I do think this one's really good mainly in the way that it advances the story. It kind of shows us a lot of things from the past. We learn a little bit about Baba being Roshi's sister. We also get some info on Gohan, but it doesn't feel like a roadblock or kind of like an unnecessary stop in the story. It definitely helps push the story along further and get us to the next Dragon Ball. So I do like that. The next saga we'll go is the tournament saga. Now I do think this saga is decent. However, it's so focused on showcasing powers and kind of giving matchups between different characters that it doesn't really move the story forward at all. There is some decent world building in the background with certain characters. And like I said, we do get some cool scenes with different fights and that sort of stuff but it doesn't do too much for the story in hindsight this is a very low stakes saga and doesn't do too much to impact anything else around it really and that's fine i don't think the saga's objective is to really push the story rather than just showcase powers and have some cool matchups now last i'm kind of just going to clump them together like i said is the red ribbon army saga commander red saga and the general blue saga and the idea of a whole army being the villain for goku is really cool and having different commanders and that sort of thing is fine but in my opinion they really mess it up by the fact that goku really doesn't have any trouble with the red ribbon army at all pretty much disposes of them relatively quickly each and every time they get in his way they honestly serve as more of an annoyance than anything and like i said these 
these sagas aren't bad they're just not as good as the other ones overall i do think this show is amazing by the way my favorite character is probably oolong i think he's so goofy and so amazing i hope we see a ton of more oolong in the future i hope we get an oolong focused spinoff i don't know and there actually was a brief amount of time where i was attempting to read the manga while i was going to watch the anime but i actually saw that the manga and anime are almost shot for shot the same they're so similar to where i don't really think it's worth reading maybe i will eventually at some point but, but i do think they're very similar in how everything works out so so there it is dragon ball holds up extremely well in my opinion i think it's a great show to watch and i do recommend if you're going to watch dragon ball at all z super anything the movies start with the original series you're gonna learn so much more i probably rate this show a really high seven or low eight for me it's a really great show with some amazing moments at certain points and i thoroughly enjoyed it and it's my opinion a great start to a great series okay and my light died so i think that's the cue to end the video so hopefully you enjoyed so comment below if you guys like dragon ball have you seen this original series did you skip it are you gonna go back to it did this video kind of push you to watch the original series let me know and like i said check out my tiktok here i post a little bit more frequently on there so for more content go there subscribe to the youtube here and thanks for watching